Hello, this is Tasty Eats by Tess. Today we're going to be making a Dutch oven lamb stew. With winter coming up, um, fall is here, we want to start eating things that are a little more hearty, um, something that warms your insides. So we'll go ahead and get started. I have this medium low, uh, the temperature of the oil. It is two tablespoons. And I'm just going to start frying this up. You don't want to overcrowd it, and you just want that lightly golden brown on both sides. This is going to have to go in two batches. So what I wanted to share with you is, you, this can also be done in um, a cast iron pot, and if there's anyone that likes winter camping out there, I've done this probably about three times over an open fire. It's, oh my gosh, it's so fantastic. It gets a darker brown. Um, all of the vegetables get a nicer, deeper, darker brown in color. So it just tastes fantastic. So the last time we went, uh, we had gone for a year camping. So it's the winter camping with a hot tent. And inside it has bunk beds and you could either have a fire inside um, or you can have it heated with gas or propane. So um, that being said, I'm just going to let this go for a while and we'll discuss all of the rest of the ingredients when I come back. Great, so the lamb has uh, just been browned. This is two and a half um, pounds of lamb that's been sliced. So we're just going to add that right back to the uh, pot. And now we can just cover evenly on the bottom of your pan or your pot. When you're doing this in the cast iron pot, and you're doing that over an open fire, there's no need to brown it. It's going to be always on the bottom of your pot when you're uh, doing your lamb stew. And because lamb has quite a bit of uh, fat content in it, you can just pour that juice that is there as well. Um, because it has quite a bit of fat content in it, it will not burn. Um, you do have to stir it periodically. So, even when it's on an open fire. So we're going to go in with three potatoes. These are fairly large potatoes. Great. I think I'm going to leave some of those out. What you're trying to do here, there's no recipe for it on saying how much of this or how much of that. You just, all you want to do is fill your pot. And it will go down by half. So those are the peppers. This is celery. And this is just for flavor. It's, you don't need to put a lot of celery. It's two small stalks of celery. So with the celery, I think I've, I've said this in a previous video, but if you haven't seen it, celery has quite a bit of strings that really you don't want to be chewing on. Um, so sometimes there's more strings than others. I just like to peel that off. You could scrape it if you want. Either way works. So that off. And this is a very chunky stew because it melts all together. So with this stew today, it's going to be one carrot, one large chopped carrot. They're in one inch cubes. You just push that down. This is the cauliflower. About two cups will be going in here.
again on the very rough job. There we go. And the lamb, before it came off, I added a little bit of salt. You put the salt and pepper to taste. And you just go with your cabbage. That will probably end up being about three cups of cabbage. Just, oops, just break that up and you can put that in as well. So you can see from this that it's getting quite full, but don't worry about it. It will go down. Now at this point you don't put any seasoning in when it's Midway through cooking, once it's reduced down by half, that's when you're going to add a tablespoon of paprika, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic, add a little more salt to taste, and some pepper. And that's basically about all you'll be doing. Now, you'll be checking also to make sure that it's not, you don't add any liquid at this point because it's going to be starting to leach its own juices out. So you don't want to add anything if you don't have to. So check it periodically. If there's no liquid at all, you can use a chicken broth, a vegetable broth, or a beef broth. Beef would go really good in here as well. So we will come back once this has gone down some and if you have some extra space go ahead and add any extra vegetables just to fill your pot a little more in about 10 minutes it should go down maybe 15 we can add more and we'll probably use all of this so that's uh for now we'll just close that up and we'll be right back once it's uh coming close to the end Great, right. so I uh, thought I should let you know as well, once I put those vegetables in, I put the lid on immediately. So when you do that, what it's doing is it's steaming in there and it's uh, bringing out all the natural juices of all of the vegetables. And that's one of the reasons that you don't actually have to add uh, a lot of um, stock. So you may not have to add any. I've had times where I didn't have to actually add any. There was enough um, liquid that came out of there. One other thing I wanted to share with you is if you're thrifty, like I am, I guess, <laughs> um, this is just fresh basil that you can get from your local supermarket. I just put it inside of a glass of water here and you let that sit. It's going to make its own roots. You don't have to start your basil from seeds and wait forever for it to grow. Just buy it at your local supermarket, put it in a glass with water, let it root. It takes about two weeks approximately. Then you put it in soil. The, the good thing about this as well, the leaves are already established. And so you're starting out with a small little basil plant really small basil plant like that, but you already have big leaves instead of it coming up slowly by seed. So this is a thrifty little idea I just thought I'd share with you. So we'll be back when this is um, done and I'll let you, sh I'll show you how it, uh, it gets plated up. So I hope you enjoy. So it's been about an hour and I've added the remainder of the vegetables except for this small little bit here, about a half a cup of carrot. Um, that's all I'm going to put in here and I'm going to cover that back up and we'll be going for about three hours approximately or until the doneness that you like. I like it to turn a li little bit uh, darker in color so it um, brings out more of the flavor, uh, but you judge to how you like it. Um, the other thing is you want the lamb to be extremely tender, melt in your mouth. So we just keep this going and um, I'll come back and let you uh, see how the end result goes. See you later. 
Welcome back. So this has been cooking for about three and a half uh, hours to four in between that period of time. Yours could take a little longer or it could be less. All you want to pay attention to is, is the meat falling apart on your, off of your fork? So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off and turn everything off. And I'll just bring it over here and you can see I didn't add any broth at all. So it has its own broth. I'm just going to show you how to plate this up. In the meantime, while I was waiting for all of that, I baked some bread, but that's a story for another day. So how we're going to plate this up, I'll just move this over. And I'll get here some of the stew. So you can see that it just, this is the cabbage and uh, little bits of meat, the carrots. Everything in there, the peppers. It just goes all together. So if you want a little extra juice, there is juice on the bottom. It's thick and rich. There was nothing added to this at all. No uh, thickener. We'll just, for this, put a little parsley all around just to give it a nice bit of color there. And I have here some celery leaves. You don't want to put too much because with the celery, it's going to be maybe overpowering, but it does look pretty. So what you could do with this as well, this is how it looks. Steaming hot. The meat is so fork tender. It just falls, crumbles, I should say. So here's the bread. You want to serve that with maybe a slice or two of bread. And here we go. This is how it looks. Perfect. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and give this a little taste. You'll see it just falls right apart. So this is the lamb. I'll take a little taste of that. Oh, wow. Mm. So tender, you barely have to chew it. If you like, you can use anything in this recipe. Anything goes. Have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed the video.